Welcome to Death and Aliens, an in-depth look at horror and sci-fi TV from two friends who vaguely know what they're doing. I'm MK. And I'm Wednesday Adams. JK, I'm Courtney. And I can't see without my glasses. I have to put those back on. But <laughs> I am um, impressed as Wednesday Adams for... Um, um, you will be receiving this episode on November 6th, which is fine because that's when I'm actually going to a Halloween party, but um, it is Halloween right now. Yes, today, right right now, today. Right now, today, um, which is why um, I look, I'm a little disheveled looking, in my opinion, because I had a costume on, um, and then I took it off, because, fun fact, when your hair is 24 inches on its own, wigs are incredibly difficult. I can imagine. I, like, could not fit all my hair in the wig at all. Yeah, I uh, I don't I don't do wigs. If my hair doesn't cooperate, I just don't do it. Yeah, but I wasn't gonna cut my hair into a blue bob. Well, maybe you should have. Yeah, but then what would I do for my actual Halloween costume the day this podcast comes out, where I'm dressing as Amy Pond? Oh, um, that you'd yeah. have to get another wig. Yeah, so it would just not. And like, what would I rather have? My long, luscious ginger hair or a terribly thin bob i mean you know everyone has um <laughs> preferences that's the word that's the word <laughs> um other than thriving on spooky day how are you miss courtney well i am trying to live my best spooky life um last sunday so we recorded saturday last week right yes right so sunday I went to my haunted cocktail soiree. Oh, right, right, right. My chocolate truffles sommelier, and it was so fun. It was the same event I went to last year with my friend Dom. We went again this year, but it was even better. They, like, it, they like stepped it up a bit. They had, like, some spookier, like, sections, and um, do you know the story of the Midnight Man? Oh, I do not. Very, very quick recap. It's amazing. I love it. They say you can play this game with the midnight man. You like somehow call him at midnight and you have to keep your, you have to use a candle only and you have to keep it lit the whole time that he's there. And you have to like keep moving the whole time until 3 a.m. If your candle goes out, you have to immediately draw like a circle of salt around you or the midnight man gets you. Um, And you have to do that until 3 a.m. And then at 3 a.m. you either get taken by the midnight man or you've survived. Um, so they had a midnight man maze, which was very fun. So you had to like go through and like, there were these like creature people dressed up as like these creatures and you would mm-hmm. give them a candle so they wouldn't come after you. That's very fun. Terrifying. I loved it. The drinks were subpar. Mm-hmm. The chocolate was amazing. Okay. Um, it was, it was just a, just a fun time. Just a fun time. Um, Lots of drinks, lots of chocolates and snacks. We had food before, we had food after. It was a whole event. Made new friends, all good things. Had a great time. I love that for you. And today I'm trying to be healthy, I guess. I discovered there's a prebiotic soda. Mm -hmm. I'm drinking an orange poppy. And it's actually quite delicious. So I'm thriving. Wonderful. Yeah. Hi. Um, you know, I had a really interesting week, uh, last week. Um, my story that I want to share about what I did on the weekend after we recorded, um, feels really depressing after yours. Oh, sorry. Um, (laughs) Because this year, if you did not know, um, because most people don't know, it is the 75th anniversary of the publishing of the Diary of Anne Frank. Oh, I did not know. And there is, in fact, one choral arrangement there. A man made like a like a formal choir, like orchestral piece of the, her diary. And Dan and his chorus performed it. And it was beautiful and haunting and like everything you would want that experience to be. And they performed it in a synagogue. And I was sitting directly behind the rabbi and 
he had the three cutest little daughters and they were like all dressed exactly how when I tell you that it was a rabbi and his wife and their three daughters I guarantee you that what you're picturing is exactly how they were dressed Mm -hmm. they were just so precious and they were like you could tell that like mom and dad were like really about supporting the synagogue and this performance but like also making sure that their kids were not like complete jerks because they're children and so like they had like the most (coughs) ridiculously giant bag of gummies (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> they were like feeding the baby <laughs> to like get through the performance. And then I was sitting behind these three like old Jewish women who were just like so enthralled and it made the whole experience. It was beautiful, but it was like not exciting and happy. It was just beautiful. Oh, but that's lovely. Yeah. yeah. I like it. And then. Um, I don't know if I was stressed out enough um, when we recorded about how I was going to quit being um, a drama teacher and directing plays and just I was done and I hated children because um, by the time Monday happened, I was literally like, "Mm, okay, done. I'm just not gonna, not gonna do it. Like we literally were like, hey, principal, can we not have a play on Wednesday? Uh, It was... Well, this time last week when we were recording, you were talking about how excited you were about your Edgar Allan Poe plays and how um, well, here's the thing. exciting the kids were making it. Mm, yeah, I don't know what I was smoking when I said that because that wasn't true. The kids, uh, they suck. Then, uh, okay, to be fair, the show actually turned out really well it was last wednesday it was wonderful all of the parents loved it the kids worked really hard um the day of i don't know what they did for the last six weeks before the day of but like on the day of they worked really hard and um dan and my friends lauren and Teresa were like no it was like so good you just don't see that because like you're in your head about what it could have been but like it was actually like really good and i was like okay i'm just glad it happened because I was literally Wednesday, I was like, I'm never, I'm just going to quit. I'm done. I'm not going to school. I don't want to be a teacher. I don't want to teach these kids. I hate them all. I'm done. <laughs> um, today, I feel the same way, but it's because um, we had a half day for Halloween and we did nothing but watch Monsters Inc. and eat sugar. And like, I, I, that is a lot for me. That is a lot, but that also sounds lovely. That sounds like what I wanted to do today. Yeah, I wanted to sleep. Mm, yeah, I wanted to do that too. <laughs> because um, I don't know if you know, but the primetime Sunday night football game last night uh, was the Bills game. So the fact that I then had to work this morning seemed criminal. And I think that it should be like a federal holiday that if the Bills play a night game, there is no work the next day. I'm I'm okay with that. <clears throat> yeah. Um. I was um, predicted to win by like 60 points and um, we have one more game and yeah. I'm pretty sure I'm going to lose. This weekend no. Family. Because Kamara really showed out, did really well this week. Like he remembered how to play football. Real good time for us, the saints. Yeah. But um, then McCaffrey did and Josh Allen <laughs> only got me 20 points when he normally gets me more than that yeah and it was a rough ga- it was a rough game but you know who didn't get like no points is uh the other bills player Diggs. is that his name stefan Diggs. yeah yeah he had a touchdown yeah and that's who dom had oh yeah oh i'm so sorry so it's been um we both have one player left, but he has 160 and I have 130. And um, I'm a little salty about it. I'm so sorry. The Saints even got 14 points for their defense this week, which is like, normally they get like three points. So <laughs> I was like, everything is doing so well. And then the Bills. It's distressing me. Go back to spooky. Okay. Um, well, speaking of things that are stressful... Let's unstress with some yeah. spiritual affirmation. Why don't we? Okay. Ah, 
<sighs> do not choose less because less is easy. Do not run from more because more is difficult. Do not settle for how it is simply because you are afraid to see how it may end up. Do not fear. You are more than ready for anything. Again, Topher Kirby. He's an author, so I looked him up because I was like, man, he has some good quotes. Yeah. And he is an author, and he has a book that's called uh, Life Isn't Made for Perfect People that just came out in 2021. And I want to read it now, and I love him. Oh, yeah. In case anyone is wondering where all of our from the last two weeks genius quotes have come from it's Topher Kirby he's a writer they're beautiful I imagine these books are beautiful so you should check I it love out it. I will you know what you should also check out or should have already checked out if you're listening to this podcast mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Stargate SG-1 season 2 episode 12 the Tokra part 2 and before we get into it I'd like to um have a quick conversation with you about Stargate. We texted earlier this week about um, someone posted on the web that October 28th is Stargate Day. So I obviously do not know anything about anything. Yeah. And so I text MK and I'm like, what day is Stargate Day? Is it October 28th? Is it August 1st or August 10th? And she's like, what? <laughs> I literally, I was, dri- I was driving to, let, let me, let me clarify. I was driving when I got your text and for a second, what I read when I said, saw, is it Stargate day was that I fucked up and posted the wrong podcast episode. And then I was like, I didn't even post an episode at all. It's Friday. What are, what has happened? And then you clarified and I was like, Oh, let me research because I was like, what did I do? Right. So we learned that Stargate Day is officially August 10th. Is that the one we decided? I don't remember. I there is no August. official day. No, there's a Twitter called Stargate Day that says August 1st. I don't actually have any idea why. Um, yeah, August 1st is Stargate Day. So the, the Stargate August 10th is about a specific episode with time travel that doesn't even make sense. I don't know why that would be the day. Um, anyways, whatever day it is, we've missed it this year. Maybe yeah. by this time next year, we will have figured out what Stargate what? is or created one ourselves. Who knows? Yeah. So many opportunities. But yeah. So yeah. if you know of a Stargate day that's like unofficial Stargate day, let us know. Because uh, we've had a confusing, confusing time with it. it. It has been something else. I think that most people um, are like leaning toward using the 28th just because it's the most, or October 28th, just because it's the most consistent like single day that you can pinpoint instead of all the weird it's the day the movie came out, right? Yes. Which, because it's not based on a book or anything, the day that the movie came out is kind of like the beginning of the concept. So that would be the most fair day. And that makes sense. Yeah. Jumping tracks. So. I say we should just decide that now. Okay. Let's do it. Done. Next year on... Uh, Thomas's October third th- On Thomas's third birthday, third we will birthday. remember... So old. Okay. I know, but he just turned two, two days know. ago. We don't have to worry mm-hmm. about it yet. <laughs> He's so big. So, um, but yeah, this episode came out on October 11th, 1998, and it was rated 8.3 stars. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the number one movie was Ants. And I started to write that the number one movie was still Ants. And then I remember that last week, the number one movie wasn't Ants. I just talked about it for 20 minutes. Because <laughs> it the day it came out. The day it came out. Yes. But so by the next weekend, it has become the highest move box office. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. 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 Um, the number one song is also new. Um, it is called The First Night by Monica. I do do not know it, no. I don't think I do. Um, I know a different song by Monica that came out around that time. Um, 
that I can't think of the, the name. I don't know. Maybe it's that one. And I just don't know the name of it. Maybe. I know a couple of Monica. I really do not. Mm-hmm. Um, if I hadn't been talking about Monica for the last um, eight months of my life, because she sang with Brandy and ruled the summer of 1998, I don't think I would actually know who Monica is. Hmm. So that's fair. Um, and the number one book is still Rainbow Six by Tom, Tom Clancy. Clancy. Um, the only event that I could find that day, um, I didn't do a lot of research into because it depressed me, um, because there was a plane that was shot down over the DRC coming from Congo and killed like 41 people. And I was like, why, why apparently on Fridays in the nineties, only bad things happen because I cannot, the news stories are never uplifting. That makes sense. So, um. The late 90s were kind of a rough time for the world. Yeah. I mean, right now is kind of a rough time for the world. Yeah. Everything's kind of rough for the world. Oh. All the time. Yeah. Um, this episode was directed by Brad Turner um, and written by Jonathan Glasner. Mm-hmm. So nothing new there. Mm-hmm. Uh, and for our guest star, I did tell you guys last week who would we, we would be talking about. Um. And I thought I would have more exciting things to say, but I don't really. Mm-hmm. Bummer. So J.R. Bourne is our guest star, and he plays Martouf. Mm-hmm. He, he's known for The Exorcism of Emily Rose and 13 Ghosts, which is exciting. I've seen um, Ghosts. He was in a ton of The 100 and Teen Wolf, um, and as well as being in like a ton of single episodes of shows of things like NCIS, Fringe, CSI. Um, A tie-in to the podcast in a way, um, he does an absolute boatload of charity work specifically for kids with cystic fibrosis um, because his niece was born with CF and um, that ties in to the podcast because um, Emma as CF in Bates Motel. Yes, okay. Um, I was trying to figure out where your connection was. But yeah, yeah, no, but that's the only reason I feel like I've been doing any research about CF recently was because of Emma. So I was like, oh, I get it. Okay. Um, there is so little about his private life online. Like I, I like st- so I like stalked his Instagram and his Twitter. Like he exists on the internet. I read his Wikipedia and I could find nothing about who he is as a person like he's canadian he's been in a ton of shows he's handsome he has a brother who is also famous and that's quite literally it Hmm. i do know that his um uh, like his display picture on twitter is the trans inclusive pride flag So, like, good on him. Um, And that is about as much information as I can find about who he is or what he believes. Well, he sounds lovely. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, he he does a lot of acting and he does some charity work and he cares about people. Like, that's good for him. (laughs) That is enough. Well, because you brought him up last week, so I was really excited to, like, deep dive. And then I was like, I am diving. And into sand there's nothing to dive here he's just like done a lot of shows that's why i knew who he was he he has like i think there was like 133 credits for acting on his page and so like i just picked ones that i knew we'd talked about before on the show and because i wasn't gonna write them all yes totally fair um speaking of 13 ghosts though my friend just showed her like 15 year old that movie for the first time and she was like mom it's not scary not as scary as I thought it was going to be. I didn't watch it. I watched it last year for the first time. And um, not as scary as I expected it to be because people my whole life told me it was one of the scariest movies they'd ever seen. And so I was like, well, I'm never watching that movie. Well, I think most people just watched it when they were way too young to actually watch mm-hmm. it. And that's why. And I'm so sorry. Speaking of things that are terrifying, I have Peacock still up on the TV um, just because I had just finished watching Bates and the suggested things for me to watch because it's Halloween include Insidious and the little boy from Insidious is st- 
staring at me from my TV right now. And that is so stressful. So if I like freak out at all, that's why. Insidious is the only movie that I have like, the only scary movie so far that I've like turned off. And I'm like, I can't watch this. I watched like three minutes of it. And I was like, absolutely not. I think I watched about half of it. Maybe. And um, it wasn't for me. Oh, no. It was very scary. Um, yeah, so uh, that is J.R. Born. Um, but like I said, this is a part two. So mm-hmm. we do get a previously on again, but at least this time it makes <laughs> sense why we have a previously on. And it's just showing everything that happened in part one of this episode. The only thing that I found incredibly strange and unbecoming of the previously on was the fact that it was like narrated by Teal. And then right before the previously on ended, Teal was like, the story continues. And I was like, what? (laughs) I didn't even like catch that. It was weird. I bet it was very weird (laughs) while it was happening. Because I just, um, like, I always, like, I pay attention enough to the previously on, usually. Yeah. I don't always, like, deep dive into it. Because I'm like, I don't know what happened. I just need to, like, see kind of what they're talking about. Yeah, which makes sense. Um, and, and to be fair, I would do more if it wasn't literally every up clip from it was mm-hmm. from the part one. Like, it wasn't like they right. gave you anything before the part one to, like, help you out. Like, the previously last week had like two different episodes that I was taking things from. And so knowing which episodes they were was important. This was strictly part one. Yep. Yep. Um, so then <clears throat> we start in the Tokra home thing and Jack is waiting and Garshaw comes and it's like, oh, I'm so sorry. It was like, you wanted to meet with me. And um, he and Daniel are, like, still trying to, like, figure out why they're going to be prisoners. And he was like, what is the real reason you won't make an alliance with us? And she's like, well, like, you don't have anything to give us. And then she's like, but actually, more importantly than you having nothing to give us, you are all so unwilling to become hosts for Selmak. And you're so disgusted by the idea of being hosts that you don't actually want an alliance with us. Like, because clearly what we are is disgusting to you. So why would you want to align with us? And I was like, she's kind of not wrong. Yeah. Like I'm, I totally wouldn't want to be the host either. Like I get it. Right. But also she's not entirely wrong. Very valid question. Um, so then Sam is, like, freaking out because she knows that, like, the fact that they, Hammond sent make peace to get her means that her dad's gonna die, and she, like, doesn't, she's like, my dad's gonna die, and he doesn't even know where I actually am, like, everything is awful, what do I do, and Jack's like, it's okay, at least we can fight our way out now because we have eight people instead of four, and Teal's like, haha, that's a funny joke. (laughs) <laughs> yeah when Sam's like I don't I don't want you to hurt any of the Tokra people and Jack's like yeah like me either but you gotta like protect yourself still like yeah and then Sam has this like weird crazy revelation and it's like I need to talk to Garshaw right now I was like, oh, no, she's thinking about it again. Um, and that might be where the credits are. I have, like, a weird gap in my notes because I had to go to a meeting. And I don't know if I timed it correctly or if I didn't. So, mm. I, I think that's where it, where it was. Yeah, because I, I think that the credits, like... After the credits is when we get her telling Garsha what she wants. Like, I, that wouldn't, it would be the only logical place for the credits to be. Yeah. And like we were saying a couple weeks ago, um, 
Stargate does have a pretty solid track record of where they place the credits. They do that pretty well. So I'm not doubting that if that feels like a credit break, it's probably the credit break. Right, right. Um, So we find out that Sam's revelation, her plan is that she wants to give Selmak to her father as to, as the host um, because she's like, well, like does, can you cure cancer? And Garcia's like, what's cancer? And they explain cancer. And she's like, oh yeah, we do that all the time. Oh, that's genius. So Sam's like, okay, so we have a host for you, but you have to let me go back. So Garcia agrees, but she's only sending Sam and Jack back and she's going to keep everybody else there um, in order to kind of guarantee that they do actually come back, even if they don't get the host. Right. Um, so they come back to SG one and um, she's like, and Hammond's like, what happened? I thought I wanted just you to come back. And she's like, yeah, but we have a way to save my dad. And he was like, what? And she's like, we're going to give him a gold. And Hammond's like, I'm sorry, what? Like, I don't, I don't think so. That doesn't I don't, that sound like seems, the answer. Right. See, I'm, I'm missing some pieces here. And she's like, please just let me try this. You know, it's what my dad would want. And apparently she's correct because he's like, okay, let's do yeah. it. Apparently they think about things exactly the same way. Yeah. So... Um, then we get a flash to the uh, tunnel world where Martouf runs in panicked because someone has given their location to the system lords and the Gawold are on their way. Ugh. So they begin an evacuation. Now, the way this was framed, it made it seem like they believed that Sam and Jack betrayed them. I didn't. I didn't really feel that way when I was watching it. Because I think because we know that they didn't, but like the timing of it, the timing of the way it was mm. shot, and the and the I like, see what you're saying. and the way that Martouf and Garsha interacted, um, because the, as the audience we know that that's not true, and because it like got squashed pretty quickly, it yeah. wasn't. But there was like almost this feeling of like Garsha questioned, like being like. Well, shouldn't let them go away because now look, like that's what we get for trusting them at all. Which I think it's why later when she does trust them, it's like so big. Yeah, because I yeah. I do think that this was purposely done at this moment as a like maybe we can't trust them. That would make sense, and if that's the way they're trying to go, I wish that the it had been clearer. Just would have made it clearer. Yeah, like yeah. like would have made it either. Like a little more either straightforward or at least longer than ten seconds. I don't know. Like, yeah, so I feel like that would have had a big effect because we would have been like, "Oh no, we know they didn't do it," and we would have been more concerned. Right, and I the way was, it is. They're like I, everyone's leaving. Yeah, and I was concerned, but again, I also like watch these episodes slightly differently than you do. So like, it right. wouldn't, it wouldn't have, it probably didn't feel that way as when you're watching it more casually yeah which is sad because i I will say in general in this episode everything i liked this episode a lot i do but there were a lot of things in this episode that i was like if i think about this this should feel way more high stakes than it feels a lot of this episode theoretically was really high stakes but then nothing really Mm -hmm. felt that way there have been a few episodes like that that I felt like, like even, like even not knowing forward, I'm like, this feels like it should matter more to me than it does. I'm like, yeah. I don't care enough. And it's not that I don't care about the show, and it's not that I don't care about the characters. It's just like this particular moment, I don't care, and I'm pretty sure that's the one I'm supposed to care about. You know? Right? Yeah. No. And it it was like it just felt like I should be more concerned that this is going to work out the way I want it to, but I I right. just kind of know it is. Yeah. Um, so then we go back to Earth. Sam goes to see her dad. 
and he's mad at Hammond for having recalled her. And she, um, Hammond was like, um, you asked to hear about her mission, so I figured she should be the one to tell you. And he's like, what about clearance? And Hammond is like, you got it now. <laughs> and so Sam starts to tell him what she like does, and he's like, haha, funny joke. That's so great. And Hammond's like, no, dude, literally, that, that's what she does. And she's like, and we're going to cure your cancer. And he's like, what's the catch? She really held back the punchline on the She part. really did. And it took um, her like three years to tell him what was going on. And then, yeah, it was like the most, and I think that's part of the thing is like these, all these like high stakes situation are like bogged down with like weirdly like casual dialogue. Right. And like when he's like, what's the catch? And uh, Hammond is like, just like, well, not going to lie to you. It's a doozy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's how you describe taking a goal host. It's a doozy. Uh, <laughs> I was perturbed. That is one thousand percent never the way I would have described it. No, 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 no. And again, no. Sorry, my sweater the sleeve came off and I'm trying to like detach the entirety of the sleeve without scissors and it's not working. So I'm just like playing with the strings. Um, it's okay. I bought it for $7 on Sheen. So like, perfect. Yeah. Um, so Sam tells her dad all about Stargate and, um, clearly he agrees to take, to go with them because the next shot is him at SGC. So like, right didn't take much convincing apparently yeah um and so they go through the gate and they get to this other planet and they're a little bit confused because there's nobody like out waiting for them so then they go back in and they find everybody like scattering and panicking and running and uh daniel's like yeah we're just helping them evacuate (laughs) very very casually said the amount of things that are not casual that were taken so casually i think uh, this scene was the one that felt the most unnaturally casual to me yeah i was like okay so like you know you have to get you have to escape but like you've now been like we don't trust you but like it's fine we're gonna let you go now because we're leaving and everyone's fine now like it's like that that was a really quick turnaround Right. And also, like, they know Sam has Jolinar's memories in them, in her head. So, like, what? It, this must be a planet they've never discussed before that they yeah. could just trust that she could go away. And also, like, they've just been talking about all this time about, like, getting a host. And finally, it's like, we're going to get a host. And they're like, mm, we're just going to leave. No, nah, we're not going to do anything else. Just going to go ahead and leave. Yeah. Um. So, and then in another thing that's, like, super casual, they're like, okay, good talk, team. Sam and Jacob, you go over here. We'll go over here. Break. Like, there's not gold motherships coming for them. Like, right. <clears throat> okay. That's where the missing, like, 1.7 stars is, is all of this. Like. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so. Sam takes her father to Martouf and to get Salmak. Daniel, Teal'c, and Jack, like, discuss the Gawuld, and they're like, oh, um, yeah, there's, how did they find us? I guess there must be a spy. And then Jack's just like, hey, um, you know those, like, TV ball things? And uh, uh, she looks like you mean the long range communication device he's like yeah that thing how big is that he's like i mean it, it can be like the size of your hand it's a walkie-talkie basically and he's like cool somebody has one i was like uh, again jumped to the correct answer way too fast right i mean to be fair i was immediately like oh yeah that guy was sketchy i remember we talked about that yeah but 
he had nothing to think about this whole time except for how that one guy maybe might have been a little bit sketchy. Right. Okay. Cool, I guess. Um, and so then Martu, if we go over to him, and he asked Jacob to get to know Selma. And um, they make some really bad jokes back and forth. And then Sarush is like, I'm the one you should be talking to because I'm the one who knows knows the experience that you're about to go through and like tells Jacob everything about Salmac and Jacob agrees to be the host in a fairly um, drawn out scene that wasn't super necessary. It wasn't super necessary, but I did enjoy it. <laughs> oh, no, no. I didn't hate it. It just like I, it was it's hard to take notes about some of the scenes in this episode yeah. because like they weren't they were important in terms of like the emotion but not in terms of like the plot like the scene where um jacob went to go throw up but then he was like don't worry sam like it's not all this drama that's making me throw up it's also the chemo like i'm dying like it was a cute funny scene between the two of them but like there was nothing that i could write about the plot having been affected by that scene at all right Right. um so then we're going back and forth a little bit in this episode, and we go back to um, Daniel, Jack, and Teal, who go to Garshaw, and they're like, we know that you have a spy, and we know who it is. And so Garshaw goes to uh, confront Kordash, and he throws himself into the ex- like the exploding tunnel. Yeah, which seems like a really um, excessively violent way to die. It does. It feels very extreme. And I don't um, know what the chokra would do to him. So, like, maybe that's worse. But still. yeah, it it seemed extreme. And um, Garsha is just like, "Thank you so much for saving us." Um, you're right, there's definitely a possibility that eventually we could find some way to have an alliance. Um, uh, Kordash was clearly guilty because he yeeted himself into death, and so now we're just moving on. Yes, absolutely. And Daniel's like, hey, I have the secret solution that I probably could have had all along because Daniel only knows things when it's necessary for Daniel to know things. Um, He's like, Um, We do have one piece of technology that you don't have. Hosts. And Jack's like, the fuck, dude? You can't just, like, offer up the human race to these people. And Daniel's like, why not? Like, if they're saving people from dying the same way that they're doing for, like, Jacob, why couldn't we, like... And, like, that's, like, super fair. And I think that it's uh, really a good use of it. Like, I mean, we haven't figured out how to cure cancer still but if you can yeah we haven't figured out how to cure cancer you are absolutely correct right but i (laughs) did read an article like two weeks ago that the same husband and wife like doctor couple that like did most of the research that ended up being used for the covid vaccine (gasps) yeah said that their cancer vaccine will be on the market by 2025 Well, because when they were doing this research on COVID, like, 10 years ago, they were also doing research on cancer. I forgot about that. Yeah, but so I was reading an article that there's a cancer vaccine that is in the pipeline. So they also have a age extension vaccine, because that's also what the Tokra do. Um, no, no, no. They that one they don't no, have. No, okay. So we still uh-huh. could use hosts, but like not to save us from imminent death. All Just right. like extend. It's not cancer. Who knows? Yeah. What's next. Right. Oof. So you know, it's nice um, to have a backup plan. Yeah, for sure. Like a safe one. They're they're very nice. They're very smart. They have like a family that they like love and follow along with and they have like feelings like uh, they don't actually like care about people and, and they care about their hosts like uh yes it's like you have a best friend with you always well the jacob called it day. jacob called it his soulmate like he was like now that i have to this new soulmate and i was like that's kind of like 
really exactly what it is. It is. I'm like, but that's like nice. Is it? I think so. I, I think here's the thing. Mm-hmm. This is my problem with it. My mind is a dark and scary place. And while I appreciate deeply having people who understand me on a deep, deep level, the way like you and Dan do, I do, much to most people's surprise, keep some things to myself. Well, here's my thing, though. And, and if there was something living in my brain, I couldn't have thoughts to myself. And that would be really difficult for me. Well, that is true. That is fair. But also, like, if you're with someone that's been alive for, like, a thousand, maybe thousand plus years, they probably have learned some techniques to help you kind of, like, cope with that. So they could also help, like, clear up your mind. And then it's, like, maybe not such a bad gig. Maybe. It's more, like, the dark, intrusive thoughts that I have that, like, I would never act on. But, like, I don't necessarily want people to know that those things happen in my brain. But, like, they've probably seen worse i mean their host died i know a lot of people have died. yes but not anyone who's living inside of you or that you're living inside of to stay alive fair they come up on death a lot it's like if i don't find another host i just die and then 200 years later here we go again ah uh, fair. fair i, I think it's a better gig as opposed to a not like pros and cons weighed out i might be okay with it you know not plus like you use all the go world technology without any like the bad parts Mm -hmm. of the go world so like there's and you don't have to be responsible for yourself 100 percent of the time except for that if you're like the human host i feel like you are more responsible because like you're you're more responsible but you don't have to be 100% of the time. Like now, everything I do, I just have to do myself. But like if the gold were to take over, they would make decisions. They would speak for you. Yeah, but they wouldn't yeah. be able but like, would I still be the one who feels tired? I don't know. But they are, they would know enough to be like, it's time to take a nap now. I don't, I don't think I just, I think I just don't understand enough of it to really be comfortable with it. I not that the, not, I'm comfortable with it is because I don't understand enough. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> the pros, the pros may truly outweigh the cons, but I think I have too much anxiety about the parts that don't make sense to me. Mm-hmm. That's fair. See, I'm the one who's like, I'm like, I don't really want another person. I don't want a partner. That feels like a lot of work to have someone outside of my body that's with me all the time. But then I'm like, someone inside of my body that lives there? Yep, I might be okay with that. So I, you know, I'm i not sure I'm the one to listen to. <laughs> I literally cried today because I missed my boyfriend who I saw today. So, like, I... I, I don't, maybe I do need somebody else in my brain just to, like, handle that. Maybe so. You never know. I don't know. But then, like, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know why I'm still discussing this. It's not real. You don't know. <laughs> um, have you ever traveled to other planets? No, I have not. But Did Interplanet not? Janet has. She's a galaxy girl. Well, maybe she hasn't been to these planets. She has not, no. So. Um, Selmak decides that it can't be a one-way street. Jacob has agreed to be his host or her host, but, like, she's like, I have to spend the next 200 years with you also, like, I get to interview you, which is so fair. But she's like, okay, I've decided if I like you. And he's like, what's what's not to like? (laughs) And she's like, well, are you a good person? And he's like, I'm going to be real with you. It doesn't matter if I'm a good person or not. I'm like, that's a terrible argument. If you have to spend, I would not want to live with him. (laughs) Um, it's like, it doesn't really matter if I'm a good person or not, because I'm going to die 
if I don't do this. And you're going to die if you don't do this. So, like, there are probably things about both of us that aren't great. But what other choice do we have? And I agree that it's not really the best argument, but it's also the most honest. Because like who because like who am I to say that I'm always a good person or always a bad person? And especially somebody who's like a general in the military US military, you've done things that on paper feel like you're not a good person, even if you did them for all of the absolutely correct reasons. And there's are there's so many gray lines. Like there's there's no way to know for sure what's good and what's bad. Right. And like who who are you as an average human being? in a world that is now so much bigger than you even knew it could be to Mm -hmm. decide what is good and what is evil. Exactly. And so I kind of loved that he was like, I don't know if I'm a good person. I just know that I'm going to die. And I'd like to not die. Which is fair. Which is fair. Yeah. And um, Salmak also likes that argument and is like, yeah, no, that's weird. Let's do it. Um and then um, oh, my notes like got really they didn't make any sense um, so then they're doing this weird transfer ceremony mm-hmm. um, I skipped the Salmak interview when I was talking about Garush or Garsha telling them that they saved them and then went back because I can't read my own notes. So but now we're back with Sarush and Jacob and they're getting ready for the transfer. And he's like, okay, what do I do? And she's like, kiss me. <laughs> and he's like, like, what? Ma'am, you are like a hundred thousand years old. And he's like, are you serious? She's like, yeah, I'm serious. And he's like, Okay. And he goes to kiss her. And he doesn't actually kiss her. Right. Because before he could put his lips to hers, um, Selmak's true form jumps from one host to the next through the mouth. And like, while that's oh. disgusting, it's much nicer and calmer than the uh, whole stabbing you through the stomach thing or whatever they do. Or the back of the neck. The back of the neck, whatever. However they choose to injure you, that's insane. Yeah. Well, and Martouf says that. He's like, yeah, like, um, the guy will do it through the back of the neck, which just leaves, like, an unnecessary and nasty scar. Mm-hmm. And Sam, uh, Sam's like, so then why do they do that? And he's like, because they can't they bear to look care. at their... No, they can't bear to look yeah. at the face of their host that they, like, destroyed. Yeah. Ooh. Um, then, uh, then Sarush dies and the gold are getting like super close and they really have to leave. But, um, Jacob and Selmak are not ready to move. Right. Um, then in a weird twist of events that I didn't see coming, um, because again, I didn't believe that anything actually had stakes in this episode. Um, Jack is like, Kadash was not actually in the same host body that Kadash was in before. I have found the real Kadash still spying on you. I think his name is Kordash. It is probably Kordash. I don't. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I, uh, it is, it is in fact Kordash. You're correct. I don't know. I just. That's okay. That doesn't matter. He's dead again. So, and this host body too. And Garshaw's like, now this time I really can't argue that you like definitely have saved us. Um, so they all go now to Sam and Martouf and they're like, okay, time to go. And they're like, but we can't move Selmak yet. And then Garshaw's just like, okay, fine. Leave him there. Um, Selmak knows where we're going, so he'll just find us when he wakes up. 
And my troop's like, how about we like don't do that? And I will right. stay so, here and make sure that it, he doesn't die from the gold. Like, why did we go through this whole thing just for him to die? Right. Yeah. And Sam's like, yeah, also my dad. Definitely not leaving. Right. <clears throat> and Jack's like, no, but we have to. And Sam's like, no. Nah. No. So I'm gonna stay here with my boyfriend, Martouf. Yes. So Sam and her soulmate, Martouf, and her father stay there, mm-hmm. and everyone else leaves. And they um go back up, and Garsha's worried that they're not gonna have enough time to get to where the other Tokra are before the Gaul discover them. Which is fair because there is literally gold ship in the air above them. Yeah. Um, so they decide that they will go back to Earth and then go to their new planet from Earth so that the gold can't find the new planet. So Daniel starts to dial Earth. They get attacked and they just make it just in time. And again, it didn't feel as high stakes as it should right. With the timing of them, like, literally just missing being killed yeah. by Gawold. Um, and then Jacob wakes up. Salma talks to Martouf. Jacob talks to Sam. Everything is hunky-dory. His arthritis is gone. It's a big, bright, beautiful tomorrow. Um, and they do the same thing where they go out. And the gate is already activating and gold are coming in, but Sam is so smart and she dials it even faster than the gold could dial it. So now she can get out first and they go home and they make it through just in time. And then they go there and everybody finds out that Salmak is safe and Jacob is safe. And there's all these beautiful moments and uh, they decide that they're going to have to go to a new planet because the spies have probably already given the location of this planet away. So now no one on SG-1 will know where they are, but they will come back at some point. And Daniel gives them one of the weird chemical signature boxes. And Jacob and Sam have a beautiful moment. And then they go away. Yeah. And like I said, it wasn't bad. It just all felt so low stakes or something that wasn't low stakes. It was, like, <clears throat> such a beautiful episode, like, emotion-wise. Yeah. so well. There's so much, like, that happened that was important. And it has prompted a couple of discussion points for me. We'll get to in a second. Okay. But, like, but it was. It was so low stakes. And I was like, this was the second part of a two-part episode that was supposed to be extremely high stakes. Yeah. It, I assumed. I assumed it was supposed to be extremely high stakes. It was not. Right. Um, I didn't feel that way, at least. But um, but it was good. I enjoyed it. I literally have in my notes. Sorry, I forgot to take notes for a minute because I was so into Jacob and Selmax bonding. It was great. No, I loved it. I, I genuinely, like like I said, there were scenes that were like so good, but I could take no notes on mm-hmm. because they just weren't. I I only cared about the people having feelings in them. Right. <clears throat> but um, that is the end of the episode. Excellent. Um, you said you have questions. Um, discussions. Okay. <laughs> um, so one of the things, like, everyone in SG-1, like, I, I don't know why it just, like, really hit me this episode, that everyone in SG-1 aside from tilt too much leads with their emotions for everything they do. And like Sam is maybe the only one who also uses some logic because like anytime that Daniel Jackson has led with his emotions, he's fallen in love with someone new he's going to marry. First of all. Yes. And someone else has to come pull him out of it. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. He succeed, but not because of, what he did right and with jack he just gets like so emotional and he'll shut down and then someone else usually sam has to come pull him out of it sam or till Mm -hmm. and sam like her father was dying so of course it was emotional but then she was like you know what dude i'm gonna go ahead and make this into a whole new thing 
And like, he's going to be a host and mm-hmm. we're going to have a really good allied system with the toker now. And it's going to benefit everyone involved, us, them, me, my father. And it is from an emotional point, but it's also from a logical point. Like, I feel like she's the only one who uses logic when she like is trying to figure things out. Even Teal'c though, like I would say even Teal'c falls into the other camp too, because like the decisions he made about his wife and his son were not intelligent decisions. No, like he definitely does just, I feel like not as much as the others. Oh yeah. But like, no, it's also because he doesn't have, he doesn't carry his emotions in the same way that the others do. Because he even was emotional with the little girl in the episode. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Like he definitely does like have emotions still, but because of his capacity for emotion, it's just, it just doesn't come out as much as the rest of them. I wouldn't necessarily even say his capacity for emotion. I would say his, um, his training because Mm. like, yeah. Because, like, I think the Jaffa training is probably um, much less forgiving than the U.S. military training, right. which would then also explain why Daniel, with his um, lack of any training in <laughs> any way, is the most likely to fuck it all up. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> True. Um, any other discussion? Yes, so. <laughs> because there's sorry there's no trivia for this episode so oh good well i'm glad i have discussions then yes um so also last week during the episode we talked about how jacob felt kind of sketchy at some points was it last week or the week before I don't it was know. it was i don't remember either but I, it was definitely there was definitely that vibe where we didn't really know why you wanted to know everything that was going on with sam Right. And so throughout this episode, I was like, okay, I don't really feel that anymore. I think he's just like sickly. He's doing this. But then like, as he's going away with the toker, I'm like, what if they set it up? Because he is their only real allied connection. I think Martouf is the best connection because him and Sam are soulmates at this point. But they're setting it up that Jacob is their only like allied for the toker. He's the in-between. And I'm like, what if he's not? Like, what if somehow he ends up like turning on someone or like one way or the other, it doesn't matter. Like, I, but I, I don't think he turned from both the Toker and the humans, but right. like, what if the Toker were like, this is how it has to be. And he's like, you know what? You're right. We're going to have to do this. I don't know if that's true or not, but my brain just went to there while we were watching this. See, episode. but I don't know. Cause I feel like a lot of the, um, a lot of the sketchy feelings I had for him were mm-hmm. cleared up in this episode. Like he talks to Sam about how like, he's like, I'm proud of you. Even I, when I thought you were just doing weird satellite stuff, I was still proud of you. And it's just like this whole, like, I don't know how to express emotion because I'm an old military man. And I think they kind of like got rid of a lot of the like, sketchy feelings which doesn't necessarily mean that they don't exist it could have been like a double bluff but like right and that's that's what i'm saying like i feel like he got rid of all the sketchy feelings like because anything was either like he didn't know how to react because of his military training or he was sick and trying to hide it because he didn't want to worry her and so like yeah everything i was like oh everything's cleared up fine by the very i was like what if it is a double bluff though like which just came from my head. It's not from anything that was in this episode. So those were things I thought about here in this episode. Okay. I like it. I thought about um, the fact that uh, Jack was very not um, prominent in this episode. He wasn't, but he was the right choice of supporting character under Sam. Yeah, but, like, well, like, I just, like, even when, like, I didn't, I knew Jack was the one who came home with Sam, right? Mm -hmm. But then the whole time they're in on Earth, other than the conversation with Hammond, Jack might as well not be there. Yeah. So, like, when Jack was walking with Jacob back in the star date, I was like, oh, shit, that's right. He was on Earth. Like, he just, he felt, like, less relevant than he usually does, and that kind of made me sad, just because... But it's not because he needed to be. Yeah. <laughs> it was just because I love him. I agree. And, like, I think that's a good way to 
do his character though for because so many people probably focus on Jack as the main character and yeah. Robin kind of is he was the name at the point like he was the only one I knew starting out like it is a four person team and they and it, Stargate at least it seems Stargate really wants it to be a four person team they don't want like just a standout and they want to make sure everyone kind of like feels yeah. important. I feel like we just haven't Maybe it's my imagination, but I just feel like things haven't really been very Jack-centric for a while. Mm. Because, no, and actually they haven't. I no. mean, I mean, so you had this season, we have the two-parter of the Toker, which is not Jack-centric. Sounds- the ones mm-hmm. You had the bug episode where Jack was the least important of the four in the bug episode. That was Toke's episode. That was a Tilk episode. Then we had the episode Secrets, which even though Jack had the thing with the um, reporter, the stuff with Sam and her dad and with what was going on with Daniel and Tilk was still felt bigger. Yeah. And then you had family so that was a teal centric episode again Mm -hmm. then you had message in a bottle which was kind of jack centric in that jack was the victim but like jack didn't do anything because he was stabbed and was dying for the whole episode then you had thor's chariot where again jack was like the least important member of the team because he didn't have the mental stuff then you had need which was the one where daniel was in the sarcophagus. So it's been like eight episodes since Jack was like the most important character. But I wonder if that was by design because you know, even up to the first season, everyone knew who Jack was. I mean, everyone knows yeah. who of them are, but like Jack has felt like the main character throughout this yeah. show. And so I wonder if they did that by design. I also love Jack and love when he's more involved, but I also get wanting to make sure everyone else feels just as important no and i do i just i think it wasn't until i saw him like play such a small role that i was like oh man it really has been a while since he Mm -hmm. has been important and i wonder if that means that we're coming up to some jack stuff or it could be something really big or if it just means that we're gonna like have to accept that jack is not the main character Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. well either way um who do you want to punch you know i don't really want to punch people but if i have to pick one i mean i guess kordash because he gave everything away not that he was really prominent (laughs) in this episode it's fair but um uh, but at the I same think, time, <clears throat> because he gave everything away, they trusted SG1 much faster. That's fair. So, I guess I'm picking him. Okay. I'm going to pick Garshaw, because she did redeem herself at the end. But she's a little bit frigid. And the the ease with which she was going to leave Selmak to die after the trouble they went through to find a host just felt punchable to me fair fair who was your mvp so this was more difficult for me i think i think i'm gonna go with martouf that's who i would have gone with too so he like he just kind of kept things together he's very like stable and like is good in a crisis, but also, like, make sure everyone's protected. Like, yeah. You know? I'm I'm going to go with Jacob. Mm-hmm. For, not for becoming the host, but for taking the world of learning that his daughter has secretly been part of fighting an alien revolution in a much better stride than most people would. Absolutely. His, like, his, his, like, calm and, like, coolness with this whole crazy situation and then like apologizing to like 
Salmac for not fully having the difference between the gold and the Tokra down yet. And like, right. I was like, that is just like a level of um, maturity and like chill that I don't think I will ever have. Yeah. I think he would have been the person I picked if I didn't pick Martuf. Yeah. So that's, that's how I'm going to go with that. Good way. Good way to go. Yeah. Uh, um, well, that is the end of that episode. And um, because it's Stargate, my guess is that the next episode will have very little to do with anything that we've talked about for the last four weeks. Because that's usually how that goes. Yeah, I'm concerned that you're correct, especially because we're like basically halfway through the season. Because this this season has 22 episodes, is that right? Yes. So we're a, a bit we're one episode over Pass. halfway, yeah. and uh, so um, now they're gonna they they had their big climax. Now we're gonna have our lull. Yes, and I will say there are two more episodes bet- before the next like weird time break. Okay, yeah. Yeah, we, yeah, we, we talked about how weird, weird time breaks. There's two more episodes like back to back in the season. I thought you meant like in the show, and I was like, I don't remember there being a weird time break. <laughs> no, <laughs> um, in real life. Yeah. No, yeah. And then there's also like later, so the next two episodes are both still in October, and then we get to the weird one where um I don't actually know which episode is gonna be which on right. um imdb because uh or on netflix <laughs> because um the episode 15 aired a week after episode 16 right so i don't we're in for know. a treat. yeah it's weird super weird um if you if you would be willing to become a host for the tokara <laughs> please tell us why and if you would not also please tell us why we need to make our pros and cons list. Yeah. Um, this is a very intense debate that we're having only in our own heads. Um, but we would love to hear your uh, thoughts on it. Uh, I feel like I get so awkward when I try to end the podcast because I'm just like, I've run out of things to say. Um, and it might be the most awkward thing ever. Um, so if you have ideas on how to make that less awkward, you could also send those. That'd be great. Um, and you can send all that stuff to death and aliens at gmail.com. <laughs> you can follow us on all of the social media at death and aliens. And if you want to, um, follow us and subscribe to our YouTube channel, that'd yes. be super cool. We have two seasons left of Bates Motel and then we are going to be picking, our new horror movie horror show and it's way easier to do a live stream through a youtube channel i believe than how we tried it last time but yeah yes subscribers. so we're, we're basically there but it'd be really cool if you yeah we need i think eight more subscribers to be allowed to live stream on youtube so if you listen to us on spotify and you don't subscribe to us on youtube just subscribe there so that we have the number and you don't really even have to listen to us there. You don't have to do anything. Um, just yeah. subscribe to us. Um, you can follow me on all of the social media at E-M-K-A-Y underscore superstar. And you can follow me at C-E cloud 13. And we will see you on Thursday for Thriller Thursday episode where we start the fourth season of Bates Motel. Yay! Yay! Bye!